space, the final frontier, an infinite horizon brimming with untapped potential and unlimited opportunities. It's the perfect playground for innovative and game-changing technologies that are truly out of this world. This is Disruptors Unleashed, a series that highlights the disruptive technologies shaping our world and beyond, and the trailblazers igniting transformative change across industries. Today, we look upward, high above the sky, to find out more about the advancements in in space servicing, assembly, and manufacturing. I'm your host, Sabrina Tan from Daso Systems. Joining me is Jason Robertson, Business Value Consultant Expert in the Aerospace and Defence Industry at Daso Systems. In this podcast, we'll discuss the technological advancements in new space, notably in-space servicing, assembly and manufacturing, also known as ISAM. You'll learn about the ISAM initiatives driving tomorrow's economic and sustainable infrastructure in space. Jason, why don't you start by introducing yourself? Yes, thank you, and uh, thank you for hosting me on this podcast. So my background was 25 years with the U.S. Air Force in the U.S. Air Force's space program, what's now known as the Space Force. So it's been around for a while, and I have over a couple of decades with that enterprise. It took me uh, mostly um, in Europe, Pacific, and, and of course in the U.S., after my time with the Air Force, that finished up in 2021, I did consulting with startups in space. I saw a need for capability during my time with the Air Force, not just from a military perspective, but for humanitarian relief and et cetera. So I did consulting with startups for a while and helping them write grants for the U.S. Air Force Small Business uh, Innovation Research Program. And then I found the opportunity with Dassault Systems to advance the use of virtual twins in the development of space systems. And luckily we've been able to come on board and work on the Deso Systems Worldwide team, uh, mainly focusing on North America and Europe, but uh, it is a worldwide endeavor. That's great. Thanks for that introduction. So let's look at new space as it is now. It's the 21st century and it's bustling with activity in new space. So when we mention space, People typically think about pictures from space, space communications, human spaceflight, and rocket launches. But now, new mission areas are emerging as the population and profitability of space increase. In particular, ISAM is shifting how companies have operated for the last 60 years. Jason, tell us, what is ISAM and what is its role in the new space economy? So ISAM covers many capabilities, but the acronym stands for In Space Servicing Assembly and Manufacturing. Um, you might have heard of OSAM, which is orbital, uh, but ISAM has been the the term that's come forward as as the uh, the go to. Um, but there's in this ISAM effort, there's also a key implied task, which you have to identify and track objects in space. And this area is known as space situational awareness. And we've done that since the beginning of the, us going into space. Um, and going into space has been a little bit of a messy business as well. Um, so we've left a lot of debris, rocket bodies, uh, other things in space, uh, human-made things. So there's also, with that space situational awareness mission, uh, we need to do active debris removal now. So it's ADR. Uh, those are a couple of implied tasks ahead of ISAM. So with this SSA, you need to know what's there in that physical space you want to use. And there's a lot of attention now on removing that orbital debris and creating a sustainable space environment without contributing to more debris. Uh, so things like reusable rocketry and those things are helping us to create less debris as well as managing the space we're using. But with that space situational awareness, once we can see what's in the environment, we can service satellites by inspecting, relocating, replenishing them, and more. Wow, so imagine the day when spacecraft and satellite servicing could happen just as easily and efficiently as refueling a car or repairing a ship. I'm just thinking it's my space movies coming to life. Exactly. I mean, we're not quite there yet, but th there's a ways to go. But capabilities like assembling structures and spacecraft and manufacturing in space are definitely moving from science fiction to reality. There have been years of experiments on government-funded space stations to explore in-space manufacturing. And, and the private sector 
is now taking these capabilities into commercial offerings to expand the in-space economy significantly. Our technology is advancing to make these capabilities in space affordable, practical, and profitable. That's great. And space technology is continuing to advance, isn't it? Only 60 years ago, the term servicing appeared in NASA's Dictionary of Technical Terms. Later on, in the 1990s, the term satellite servicing began to pop up. So it looks like ISAM isn't really a new concept here, but there's renewed interest and investment in this area, and it's fueled by a maturing vision of a modern in-space economy. Yes, for sure. Servicing was conducted in the early days of spaceflight and continued into the space shuttle program and space station programs such as Mir and Skylab and what we have today of the International Space Station or the ISS. But these were not an accessible affordability level and the use of the technology was crazy expensive. Now our technology readiness levels or TRLs for ISAM requirements have emerged and investments are being made to further advance the TRLs needed for an in-space infrastructure and an economy there. Looking at technology maturity, the mission capabilities for servicing and assembly are in the near term, that's within five years, while manufacturing will be more of a long-term capability. We're looking at beyond five years for those. Okay, I see. But I guess I have to ask Jason, why now? For 50 years, satellites have been designed a certain way. Why are ISAM innovations and ideas gaining momentum now? It's a great question and, and a good point. And recently, thoughts and paradigms have shifted to think more of spacecraft sustainment and the sustainability of the space environment. So if your spacecraft's around longer, you're going to get more revenue from that spacecraft. And then, of course, cleaning up the environment uh, of space uh, creates more usable space and those orbits that, that generate profits for these commercial uh, endeavors. Another area that supports servicing capability maturity is a recent story of the U.S. Federal Communications Commission, or the FCC, issuing a hefty fine to a company for failing to move an old satellite far enough away from others that were still in use. I'd say that the technology is at a stage where companies must start utilizing it or they'll be held accountable, financially in this case, for improper activities in space. This enforcement of regulations should get more of the industry to pay attention. Now, now this fine was tiny compared to the revenue reported by the company in the last year. However, it has to start somewhere, and this is the first step towards that accountability uh, in space. Exactly, it has to start somewhere. I think companies are used to launching one and done satellites into space, but now they have to consider what actually happens when the satellite becomes redundant. And there's no shortage of innovative actors who are trying to answer this question. They come in all shapes and sizes, from new startups to traditional OEMs, working to advance technologies for use by the in-space economy. Looking at these companies now, what milestones should they target to be first to market in a competitive industry? I think getting to the MVP, the minimal viable product, or the first mock-up, is an essential step in lean product development. But this can take months or years to get that first prototype. Lean and agile product development processes are vital, especially for startups in the ISET market. Layers of complexity must be balanced with the risks and the resources available to these, uh, these people bringing this innovation to life. It's no surprise that getting to the MVP is time consuming. So is there anything out there that can help companies reach the MVP quicker? Well, yes, I would say, well, as paradigms have shifted, well, we've discovered a model-based approach is much faster and more efficient, especially if your team works in a collaborative environment with digital models and virtual twins. Products can be right the first time, having gone through rigorous physics-based simulations to drive design and determine the performance before you ever bend metal for your product uh, to make that physical product. This can shave months to years, really, off of the time to market. That's a really good point. And we already know that model-based systems engineering, or MBSE, has been proven to lower business risk in both space and non-space applications. In a digital environment with complete visibility to design, test, and validate complex systems, MBSE offers many advantages of being in space, but without the high cost and risk so, other than MBSE, what else is vital to ISAM's success? Scalability is key, creating processes and structures that can grow with you. 
Having an innovative product design is just the beginning. Those who position themselves for scaling up to meet the demand and expanding their portfolio of capabilities are bound to be more successful than approach with only a short-term outlook. You're exactly right, Jason. Planning for growth should always be a part of your initial strategy. And this means the digital solutions companies use must incorporate a long-term view. Growth, development, and scalability can be inherent in a company's processes and approaches, especially in a collaborative environment, like Dasso Systems' 3D Experience platform. And a collaborative environment, along with collaboration across the space ecosystem, can only benefit ISAM players. Being involved in a network of government players, other startups, and major OEMs brings synergy to your efforts and creates mutually beneficial scenarios as players navigate the new space economy. And connecting with PhD holders, startups, and experts, even Dasso Systems' own R&D teams, it makes information sharing and innovation much easier and faster. The new space economy has many players, but let's now focus on the startups what are some startups leading the new frontier of space technology in areas such as space traffic management and satellite servicing? Well, I've been very lucky in my uh, time to meet a lot of really innovative startups. Um, there are several startups that are addressing space traffic management that you mentioned, but one that has stood out to me for years is Leo Labs. Uh, they are pioneering commercial space situational awareness, that SSA that we mentioned before, and they're providing space object identification. We still classify them as small business uh, by definition, but they're really doing big things. And another startup, uh, when we talk about ISAM, is in the areas of, of satellite servicing. Uh, Starfish Space comes to mind. Starfish Space has launched its Otter Pup spacecraft, and they're progressing uh, in their mission of space tugs in orbit to provide autonomous satellite servicing. Nice. The startups are really moving fast. I think in time, we'll see satellites with longer life cycles and greater mission performance. And I don't think any of this would have been achievable without digital solutions. What about other areas of ISAM, like assembly and manufacturing? Yes, uh, the assembly and manufacturing areas of ISAM are where we will see uh, shop floors and laboratories in space. Startups are moving in this area too. Uh, one that comes to mind is Think Orbital. Uh, they're developing large, scalable structures to support the in-space economy. One that you may have seen in the headlines with crew training and space launches, uh, space station development, and spacesuit development is Axiom Space. Uh, it's quickly developed a winning record, and we're sure to see more great things to come from Axiom. One other quick mention is that everything happening in the space economy requires data handling and processing. Companies offering in-space computing capabilities like Nebula Compute and Lone Star Space, they're addressing a needed area to further accelerate the new space economy. Space used to be dominated by a select few. Gone are those days. Today's startups are present in almost every corner of the new space environment. For our listeners who want to win in the new space race, is there anything you'd like to say to them? Yes, there's so much happening in the space sector. Traditional areas that have been around for over 50 years, such as Earth observation and communications or space-based communications, those continue to advance and improve life on Earth while helping us gather and promulgate insights not seen before. Space exploration also continues and new countries are entering the exploration arena as well. At the same time, new missions in space are developing, ISAM being our topic today, but others such as space-based computing, orbital habitats, space logistics, space traffic management, and space tourism. These are all areas we'll see science fiction move towards reality. It's an exhilarating time to be involved with space, and I really look forward to seeing the innovative products and processes continue to spawn from the new space ecosystem. I think if we have this conversation a year from now, there'll be, there'll be things we hadn't imagined uh, in play. So it's a very exciting time to be involved with the space ecosystem. Thank you, Jason. Together, we've unpacked the state of the new space economy, the developments in ISAM, and how digital tools such as virtual twins and a model-based approach can help all new space players defy the limits. To learn more about Dassault Systems' innovative solutions, visit 
www.3ds.com and check out the Aerospace and Defence Industry page. Disruptors Unleashed is produced by Dassault Systems. For more episodes, follow us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Deezer or your nearest audio streaming platform. To learn more about Dassault Systems, visit us at 3ds.com. Thank you.